Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is effectively the middle of a massive uh, repotting session that would be far, far too much for one video. So um, I know that I'm starting a new one. Um, there is a reason. Um, videos that are just too long and repetitious are tedious for me watching and I'm sure for you. Right, so we've set fire to the scissors again. You <laughs> saw that in the last repotting video. I need to take that off and in doing so that's a load of roots gone missing. Well that's handy. I must admit I was expecting that to be um, the dreaded purple ring for some reason. I don't know why, just because this plant hasn't got a lot of vigour. Um, but we're safe on this one. So seal the wound with a bit of cinnamon. And even though that doesn't leave a lot of roots, there's still a lot of the roots that are left that are no good. So we need to get them off. That's not going to leave a lot, but everything under this bulb serves no purpose. Um, and what I'm really interested in now is just... Yeah, those two are gone, so we can get in there and get those two off. So I say this is slightly different because I'm actually filming the root pruning process which I don't normally do, I normally do this off camera. But what I'm doing is checking for softness and firmness. Now that root has branched, this is active, that end isn't, that end is dead. But if I trim it there there's no reason why it won't branch. That's soggy but that bit's firm so we'll only go back a portion. That's firm right to the end. That's firm, that's soggy. <laughs> that's soggy, <laughs> came off in me and your honour. That's soggy right up to the base. No point in keeping that. These are good. Right, now this needs a different repotting thinking. What we've got here is larger fleshy roots, yeah? And some new ones just starting under this new growth. This was potted as a consequence of the large fleshy roots in large bark last time round and it didn't generate a very good root system. So despite having large fleshy roots and my theory being that the larger fleshier roots normally need more air around them, I think this one was lacking hydration because obviously the Orchiata bark, the large grade, dries incredibly quickly. So it's not going in the large grade bark this time, it's going in a smaller grade bark with some moss. And let's see if that works. You know, if you try something and it doesn't work, well, there's no point in trying the same thing again, is there? <laughs> Banging your head against the wall and saying it hurts and then doing it again and saying it still hurts. Yeah, so a rethink. So we're going to go for a smaller grade of bark with some moss. But I still want that in a small pot. I don't know quite. The trouble is these roots grow quite long. So I'm going to, I need a deep pot, which means I'm going to go for a larger size than I would really want. But it's still an air cone. So I think that will do. So a bit of chunky in the bottom. I don't want to block the air cone off completely. Defeat its object. Now what I've got left here is a mix of medium and small left over from the last pot with some moss. So what I'm going to do is add some, because that's a reasonable size pot, so it will take a bit of um, media, especially the way I squat it in. So that's some medium bark, and we'll still add a little bit of small in there. This, this root system did not do well in large chunky bark that would, would have been very airy and it didn't do well in that level so this time it's going in something a bit more compact with a bit more moss so it will stay moist longer and see if it generates a better root system. Sometimes you just have to try these things and sometimes they don't work and when they don't work well there's no point in repeating it is there? If it's not working change something and the thing I'm changing with this is the density of the media 
and its ability to stay moist longer. And that's adding the moss in. I always break my moss up, there's a good reason for that. When I mix this, long straggly bits of moss can end up with parts of the pot quite soggy and other parts with no moss. So by breaking it up quite small, not shredding it completely, but it mixes in better and distributes more evenly. I don't want this soggy, but I do want a lot more hydration in this mix this time round. Right, a little bit in the bottom. I might end up having to stake this one. I've got away with it so far. This is not a good root system that's left, but I can see it's about to generate another new root system. So it won't have to live on that long. Now these are um, quite bendy roots, but they can still break. So I'm going to twist it slightly. And that encourages the roots to go into the middle of the pot. It just takes them away from the edge, which is where the pressure's going to be. And I don't want any air spaces, so a little bit at a time. Just point it towards the middle. Get some down in there, then move the plant. Make sure there's some down the back. Because the roots were twisted, so the roots that I've got are now all over the pot. Normally, the new roots would be under the new growth and underneath the rest of the plant would be next to nothing but because I twisted it the roots are now all over the pot so uh, need to get them evenly distributed now because these are large fleshy roots I can't go too mad if I compress this hard like I would with a finer root system I'll crush those roots which I don't want to do because I haven't got many they're precious Yes. So we're not going in too hard this time, which, as I said, probably means I might have to stake the flipping thing. And then the idea is that when the new root system gets going, and this new growth takes off, if the root system starts to fill the pot, I can just lift it out gently, without disturbing the roots, and just put it into a bigger pot. Pot it on, I think is the expression. And that way, it can have a bigger root run without disturbing the existing root run. I want these, uh, this mossy part right round the base of that new growth but not burying it. I need those new roots which are precious to get straight into some media and get going. And I've got away without staking. Good. Right, shiny new tag. Tag round the back. As I said, when I come to water this over the next couple of months, the only new roots are going to be round this part of the pot. So if the back of the pot's still wet, I may not want to water that part. Now I know this sounds odd to only water part of the pot, but it is possible, with care, to just water a section of the pot that has the roots that are, you know, in need. So that's the idea of that. So that's that one done. Right, now because I need to clean the next part up um, with the hydrogen peroxide, just clean the algae off and um, anything else that might be lurking, there'll be a short break. I'll be back. This setting fire to the scissors is good fun. <laughs> it reminds me of that um, song Fire Starter. <laughs> and the guy out of um, Suicide Squad who set fire to anything and everything in some cases. Right, this is, I've forgotten, this is my Alicera. This is Sunday Best Pink Skirt, variety pink skirt. Um, a lot of these roots are coming off, and that's the only reason I've um, separated this from videos. Now this is different. This was a Fusarium plant. I bought a lot of plants from the same eBay seller, mainly Cattleyas, but in amongst them were some Oncidiums. And, uh, or Oncidium Intergenerics, um, or Oncidium Alliance, whatever you want to say. But if you look at the previous root system that this generated, it's quite fine. But if you look at the new roots coming out on the latest growth, they're a bit more chunky. Now that just tells me that the front end of the plant is totally recovered. Yeah? But what I've got is one old pseudobulb that I want to keep um, but nonetheless it's got a manky bit of rhizome sticking down 
and you know me, any chance to cut a rhizome, I'll do it. Now in theory, this should still show signs of Fusarium because it's the old part of the plant. But nonetheless, I've grown this plant on in a state of recovery. And there you go. It's now clean. So from the old bulbs that I've gradually pushed over the years, because I've had this plant a long time, I've grown it clean at long last. So it's now safe. Nonetheless, there's a load of these roots coming off because these are on the older part of the plant and they will just get in the way and they will die if they're not already dead. So I'm cleaning the base of the plant, leaving the new roots over here. Now some of these are good but I want to get it in a small pot, so they're coming off. It's a branching root system. This does not do a lot of damage. On root systems that grow long roots with a single growing tip, that tip needs to be protected at all costs. But on this type of root system, it branches all over the place. So anything that looks remotely iffy is coming off. Because it's only going to die back. And then I've got a pot full of dead roots. Just getting into the, this area, this is, um, this is not good. Still may branch higher up though, just because the growing ends have gone, doesn't mean to say it won't branch. That'll do. So you know, some of these fine roots are active. These are good roots, and look where they're coming from. They're around the back of the plant. So this plant truly has recovered. I'm impressed. Um, and one of the reasons this was coming out of its pot to get repotted was first to check how it was doing and secondly this one had actually been in its pot quite a while. So it was in media that was due for renewal. I'm not going to go too mad because there's no point. It's a good root system on here. But there's no point in potting dead roots. Unless by trying to trim them you damage the new roots, in which case flipping well leave them. The new roots are precious. If you look here, where's my camera? Let's get it in a bit closer. These are precious. These are the new root system under this new growth. They're larger, they're fleshier, they've got lovely green tips. They are precious. These, not so much. They may branch and start growing again. But I suspect coming from a finer root system they will only grow in that form. They won't suddenly start chucking out thicker, fatter roots from down in here. But it is doing it up here. Those are the important roots. And those tell me that plant has thoroughly made it. Backed up by that. But we need to just seal that wound. So a bit of cinnamon. Seal that off. Not absolutely essential, but you know, what's the point of not doing it when it can avoid some rot getting into the base of the plant? So it's worth doing. It dries it off, it seals it, and the cinnamon seems to have some sort of um, sterilizing properties in it, which still amazes me because at the end of the day, it's a spice in your spice cupboard, you know. But it seems to do the job. How and why, I'm not fussed, as long as it does. Now I want to try and get, I know this is going to sound daft, but I really do want to get this in a small pot. But I don't, I'm going to have to have a pot with some depth to it. <coughs> have I got an air cone? Actually that's a good air cone there. That's, a, that's, a, that's an unusual looking pot. That's got a very wide air cone, almost the whole of the base. So we'll have that one, we'll grab that. <coughs> now we have a conundrum. We're going from a fine root system to a more chunkier root system. So we need some sort of medium that's like half and half really. But this plant seems to have been growing better since it was hydrated for longer rather than drying out fast. So I'm going to go chunky bark in the bottom as always. Protect the air cone, don't block it. There's no point in having it if you're going to bung it up with moss. So some chunky stuff in the bottom. Decisions. What am I going to do? I think I'm going to 
and go with the same principle. I'm going to go with half medium bark, half small bark, bearing in mind my theory of putting repots into the smallest part I can cram the flipping things in, is to generate a good re root system quickly and it does seem to work. And as soon as that root system is good and filling the pot, I can just lift it out and put it in a bigger pot once it's got the root system. Trying to get it to do that in a larger pot just doesn't seem to work. Whoops! Knock all your chunky stuff all over the place, why don't you? <clears throat> right, so I'm going to add some moss. don't think it had any moss last time. I think it had medium and large bark. And it had been in the pot quite a while. So although the media wasn't breaking down, it wasn't smelly, it didn't smell of mushrooms, there was nothing really wrong with it. But to leave it there in that pot and allow this new growth to grow with its new root system into that media would have restricted my ability to repot it without stressing the plant out. And I'd have had to wait for quite a while to get the plant in that state again. By then, the media may well have gone over. So, better safe than sorry. As I say, these are, these are all Oncidium Alliance in this Mammoth repotting session, which is encroaching on my tea time. It's dark already. <laughs> but nonetheless, I want to get the session done in one thing, but I didn't want it as one silly long video. I thought it would be better to split it up, which is what I've done. Right. Now this is quite a short um, root system now, so yep. that does look a bit squashed in there, but I think it will do the job. Now, if this had a back of a plant with next to no live roots, I would probably just put bark down the back to hold it in place. But the root system on this is active all round the plant. <coughs> so, we'll have some media for growing into. Boy, am I going to have to be careful with these new roots. I've just got to try and hold the plant away from the edge of the pot so that my finger can go down the edge without snapping those root tips off. They're precious. I'm, I'm sure it would grow some more but it seems silly to lose the ones I've already got. Let's look after them. What I'm doing here is I'm letting the media go down with some gentle pressure and then as I go I'm lifting the plant. Just gently lifting it because I want it nearer the top of the pot but I don't want air gaps. So I'm just getting a bit down in there compacting that reasonably well and then lifting the plant as I go and really, really going careful with that new root system that's just starting. And once I actually get to the point where I'm happy the plant's going to stand up, then I will loosely pack some media around that new root system and not try pressing it down in any shape or form. It's just going to get loosely set. Still a little bit wobbly, but I reckon if I push some more down the back, it should hold it. That will do. Right, now we've run out, but this part, I need more small than big, and some moss. was a bad guess on my part, wasn't it? But that's slightly larger part, pot than I had in mind. Um, but this bit now is loose. This doesn't get pressed down because if I press down where those new roots are, they will snap or they'll crush. So like I said, this is a conundrum, this plant, because it had a fine root system, but the new roots that are growing now are not fine. They're more chunky. So we'll let the roots do the work, and the roots can get down into the media and hold the plant secure. Especially as it looks like they're going to be much larger than before. So there we go. That's 
loose, loosely packed, no compacting, nothing at all, just gently dropped in place everywhere where I can see new roots. The bit round there is not so important, although I have got quite a large gap there. We will put some in there, I think. Right, there we go. So that's that one. <coughs> I've been rescuing that plant for probably three, three and a half years. I would now say it's free of Fusarium. Even the oldest part of the plant was clean. So the chances of the newer part having it are zero. Um, this is the first plant where I haven't got to do a new label because it's already got one of the new style labels. So that can go to one side, have a good water, settle that media in. That's that one done. Right, short break again. Right, now this last one needs some care for totally different reasons. Um, this is the Banfield Ara. Gilded Tower, Mystic Maze. And I think the name's changed. <laughs> but having written the tag out, I'm not changing it now. Uh, so having set fire to the scissors again, I'll show you what the problem is with this one. That large pseudo bulb I would like to take off. It's the oldest bulb. If I take that off, that's going to come with it. And that's still got leaves. I don't want to lose them. So that's got to stay. The other old pseudo bulb is so close to the new growth, it's not worth the risk. So those two are going to have to stay. Now on this particular plant, this happens, this is natural. It always turns black on the oldest bulbs, it's a strange one. I've got another um, odontoglossum that does that as well. But my annoyance is I haven't got access to any rhizome that I can cut. Oh yes I have tiny little bit down there and that's the part where the oldest roots are as well so let's see if we can get that off without the bulb detaching preferably that's okay bonus right now what we've got here is a fleshy root system that does branch and there are very few believe it or not live active root tips in here but these are active roots there's nothing wrong with that so even though the top bit doesn't look too good it's actually okay so deciding which roots to take off on here is iffy because you could end up taking some good ones off trying to get rid of the manky ones so I'm going to use the pulling process rather than the scissors simply on the grounds, if I start getting the scissors in amongst this lot, I'm going to be cutting off good roots. So I'm trying to be selective. See up here, this root looks manky, but down here where the ends are, it's still actually okay. So this looks like a lousy root system, but it's not as bad as it looks. This bit over here is bad. <laughs> That's underneath the oldest bulb again. So we can certainly have a hack in that area. That thins out what we've got. Taking them off at the base, they then fall through. That one's no good, you can come off. You're no good, you're all uh, wiry. I'm not going to take too much more off. Have that one off. This is all the older part of the plant. If you're in doubt, just track the root back and see which bulb it comes off of. And if it's your oldest bulb and it looks a bit iffy, then it probably is. See, like this one. This has got nothing on the end of it that's worth keeping. So it can come off. That's probably about it. As I said, these look bad. A lot of that's the algae. But if you follow them through, they end up with roots towards the end that is not too bad. There are a few manky ones still in the middle there, but I can't really get at them any sense. I can get at that one. <laughs> See where it wiggles at the start. So we can take that one out. Probably not going to do much more than that. You can come out. 
can see you're no good. Cue for a song. <clears throat> Bad one there. Follow it back. It goes right into there. Gotcha. <laughs> you snip it at the base. You, then you've got to find the bit that you've just cut off and unthread it. It's a manky end, but the rest of it's okay. So we'll leave the rest of it and just take the manky bit off. That's about it. I don't want to go too mad. It's just those couple in there that are short, stubby, and they will only rot. Just trying to get them as close to the base as I can. Also, thinning out a root system does leave room for the new roots to grow. It does actually help. That's about it. Right, so this is a little bit unusual. Um, these roots have started to grow. Well, that one stopped growing. Well, that one stopped growing and then started again. And as I said, these, these roots look a lot worse than they are. So I need to maintain that root system. And as much as I'd like to cram that in the smallest pot I've got, it won't go in. So it, I might even have to go and get another pot. If I can get that, that in one of these pots, I will. But it's going to be tight. But with a bit of twisting. Yep, that'll go in there. And it'll go far enough across the pot that the new growth, with its new roots that hopefully it's still going to produce, will still be okay. That's a new pot, so we can get the... Take the publicity off. That's if it's going to come off. It doesn't seem to want to come off, does it? Come on! Gotcha. Get rid of the publicity. They didn't pay me to publicise their pots. And they're not what I thought I was going to get. I thought I was going to get opaque pots, and I ended up in clear ones. Not their fault, just not a very good photo. Well, I guess it is their fault then, isn't it? <laughs> I should have taken a better one. But in the picture, they looked opaque, and when they arrived, they weren't. So, chunky stuff, minus the pieces of wood. Keep the air cone clean. Now, thick fleshy roots, but it hasn't been growing that well, and it was in large bark. Lots of air space, large chunky root system. That's my theory. But I'm beginning to wonder, when I put a plant in the large airy bark, and the root system and the plant doesn't seem to be growing so well, I go down a grade, so instead of the large bark, we're going to have the medium bark. So that will um, still have plenty of air, but more root contact. And I might even put a little bit of small in there as well. Not a lot, because it is quite a large fleshy root system in its nature. But with all my Oncidium Alliance, every time I repot now, those that were in just bark that don't seem to have done too well are getting some moss. On the grounds that during the warmer weather, they're drying out too fast. And I think that's part of their downfall, or potential downfall. Now this time of year, they will stay moist a bit longer than perhaps I'd want, but that just comes down to careful watering. And looking at each pot in turn and thinking, are you still wet? Do you really need some more water? And if you don't, then don't. Leave it out. Leave it till next time. Because if it goes dry for a few days, you're going to do less harm than keeping it soggy in the winter when the temps are low. So uh, that's my theory of the Oncidium Alliance at the moment. Apart from adjusting media types, having analysed how it did since the last time it was repotted. A little bit heavy on the moss, but um, we'll see how it does. It didn't like being in large bark without any moss, and although that's going a bit to the opposite extreme, we'll see how it does. Now I've got to get a lot of roots in a very small pot, so this is where the twisting comes in. Get all your roots in with the plant high, make sure they're all in, none sticking out, otherwise you'll start breaking them. And when they're all in, twist it. And it seems to migrate the roots to the centre of the pot, which then allows it to go down. 
I hope you can, no, I expect my hand was in the way, but you can see the roots are now evenly distributed and um, still leave space to get some media in. Now I'm starting at the back of the pot again because the first thing I'm going to do is squash the plant up against this media to get the new growth in the middle if I can, or as near to the middle as I can. There's only one new growth to worry about as long as it's got room. But you can see, potentially, these bulbs get pretty damn big on this plant. I've never managed to recreate that bulb. That bulb was on it when I got it. I've never managed to recreate one that big. <coughs> Large, chunky, fleshy roots and not necessarily bendy. So I am going careful. Most of that went straight down the outside of the pot. Oh, I'm getting tired, come on. Yeah, this will be the end of this video, doing this last plant. I've still got um, two plants out of this mammoth session that I haven't actually repotted yet. But I'm going to do them off camera. On the grounds, it's the two pieces of Peter Comp. And repotting those is identical to the Shari Baby, which I've already filmed. So it would only be a repetition. I'm sure you'll uh, manage without seeing those repotted. To say it's just a repetition of what I did with the Shari Babies. Same sort of root system. Same two plants out of one pot that need going in separate pots. So the chat would be the same. Everything would just be the same. So uh, this will do. As I say, this has been a mammoth session. It's the end of a very long day. It's currently ten past five and I haven't had my tea yet. So this is the last bit. How are we doing here? That's good enough. It's plenty sturdy enough. Just going to try and find some pieces of bark without any moss to put round the back here. It'll help hold it steady without sinking the pseudo bulbs into anything that's going to go soggy. <coughs> If you think, if you've got a rhizome with a pseudo bulb with no roots underneath it, that's got to be the place where it's going to go wrong. If it's in media with loads of moss, then it stays wet. But if it's just bark with air gaps, that part of the pot will dry fastest. Right, my new growth is just touching the surface. And I have got air gaps, so I'm going to have to get rid of some of them. If you hear a nasty click followed by language, it means I can hear the roots breaking. But I think this plant will take off a lot better in a compacted media with some air, yes, but a lot less air than it had before and the ability to stay moist a bit longer. How are we doing now? That's not bad. That's where the big air gap was. You can see it's compressed a bit now, so it's not quite so bad. That's not bad at all. Given that that root system was a lot in a small pot, that's the time it's more difficult to actually get the media down in between the roots, because there aren't a lot of gaps. When you haven't got much of a root system, it's easy. But when you've actually got quite a large root system, it becomes more difficult. So that'll do for that one. My shiny new label, which I've just written, and I wrote that knowing it's wrong. I know the name of that has actually changed. I saw one at a show recently, and it has changed quite dramatically. Now, I don't quite know where that cut off. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. The battery went on the camera, so at some point it cut off, but I don't know where till I get it on the computer. So um, I'll probably edit out the abrupt stop and this bit will join on in. That's the first time that's ever happened to me, but my really big battery that lasts hours and hours and hours is on charge. So I'm using the little ones and they obviously don't last anywhere near as long. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the repotting stuff and um, although they were all on Cydium Alliance, they all had differences. They all had to have a little bit of thought about the media, the pot size, how much to take off, where the new growths were, whether there were or weren't any new roots, and um, etc. So I hope that's um, put some information out there that's of use, that's based on 
lots of occurrences of this over the years, if you see what I mean, and things that have been done and tried and didn't work and have then been tried differently and do work. And, and that's a, often a, a lot of what orchid growing is all about. It's down to trial and error. You've got to try something to see if it works. And if it works, great. There's no need to fix it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. But if it doesn't work as well as you think it should do, well, there's no point in repeating the exercise. You need to try something different. Okay, so see you next time. Bye for now.